How's it going, everybody? Welcome back to The Big Thing. It's Monday. It's our live show. It might not be live for you. You might be watching on uh, Spotify. You might be listening on Apple. You might be listening to it on Spotify. I don't know. You might be watching on the replay. I'm not here to judge. I'm just here to say that it is uh, Monday, and we have a lot to talk about, man. The Acolyte. Everybody's been talking about this show. What's it going to be? The fact that it's finally a finally a show that's not in the time period of right before the rebellion or right after the rebellion or in that general time period, the Skywalker era. Finally, a show or a movie that's 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 has nothing to do with characters that we know. Well, maybe Yoda. But other than that, it's brand new characters. How's it gonna do? What's the trailer gonna do? Is it gonna set a mood? Are people getting excited for it, or is it gonna be an uh-oh type of trailer? I don't know. But nonetheless, we have information and news on the release date. We have news on the, uh, the a new synopsis of when the trailer is actually dropping. So there's a lot. There's other Star Wars news. Uh, Patty Jenkins movie is happening again. Uh, okay. Is it? And if it is, when's it coming out? 2075? I mean, with all the movies that they have set up, who knows? Maybe it is going to happen. Maybe they're going to make it make it happen. We'll talk about that. Rebel Moon had a new trailer today, the new one, uh, the second movie. So that'll be something we're going to discuss. I mentioned to you guys the, um, you know, the fact that the Acolyte has taken place in this time period. And now Mangold's doing one in the uh, Old Republic or there's even, even before that, like the start of it all. But even though they made it seem like that was an original pitch from everything Benioff and Weiss have said and things that we had heard that Benioff and Weiss movie was supposed to be that, Well, they have something else coming out. They have three body problems coming out and they're already talking about season two and season three. So we'll see because science fiction starting to hit a little bit more. And Dune obviously is a testament to that Dune two. It looks like it's gonna cross 500 million. Talk about, the box office and how Kung Fu Panda and Dune are just going kind of toe to toe. Uh, I'll tell you a movie that's getting a lot of hype is civil war. Alex Garland's new movie South by lost their minds. And then people lost their minds because people said it was good. We're not allowed to say things are good anymore. So, um, but uh, apparently it's really good. I'm excited to hear it. I mentioned Timothy Chalamet. There's new photos of him as Bob Dylan. That's right. Kong Godzilla. That new movie's coming out. It's at least kind of gearing up to make like 45 to 50 million. Is that good or bad? That's all the stuff that we're going to discuss. And that's a lot. And obviously, I already see you guys are throwing in questions. We're going to get to all your questions. So if you're brand new to the channel, you've never been here, please subscribe to the channel. Uh, as of right now, as of right now, as we're speaking, we have 132,648 subscribers. We are aiming towards that. 200,000. The brand new channel down earth with Christian Harloff is almost at 15,000. So we're hoping to get that one to at least 25 to 30 by the end of the year. So anyway, it's myself. It's John Roca. It is the big thing. Let's get to it. Here we go. How's it going, everybody? Welcome back to the show. It's the big thing. It's our live show. And joining me every Monday, happy to have him. He wasn't on the poster of the Schmodown to let me know about it when I tweeted it out uh, this weekend. Uh, and he'll let me know about it on the show. It's uh, John Roca. Right here. Right here, you sack of shit. <laughs> Do you know what I did? So I, 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 I know only you. Only you. This is what yeah. I did. It's like uh, it's Frank Janish, who has been just crushing it, putting everything yeah. up. That whole channel is just yeah. managed by him. He's put every single match. There's an outlaw playlist. Is there an outlaw playlist? Oh, that's good. Playlist. Thank There's you. an outlaw Thank playlist. There's all these different things on there, and he put it all together. And I was like, you know, I got to let people know what this guy's doing. So I'm like, Google Schmodown. First image that pops up, I throw it on the thing, and I just tweeted it. It was a great po photo. It was like it, was, <laughs> it had the odd couple with the titles. It had yeah. Mara, and it had Dan, and I think it had Demolant on it. And yeah. I'm like, oh, that's great. Looks great. Pops. Throw it out there. Gets like fifty thousand or thirty to forty thousand views on uh, on on X, and people are listening to it and talking about it, and all these all these awesome. nostalgia thing. You're the only person that writes it goes, 
Ah, the disrespect. The disrespect. I swear <laughs> you were in, that you weren't on it. Kalinowski deputized, deputized me to do that, to, t- to text you on behalf of oh, both of us. Oh, would say it to us? I'm wouldn't be surprised. I'm sure he felt the same way. Um, no, no, I was busted. Yeah, I, I know you were. But it I, is a beautiful picture. And it was. Of course, yeah, it was Danny Boy deserves to be front and center. He is yeah. the greatest. So yeah, you know, no well, you Someone wrote it. So someone said, "Who do you think was the Hulk Hogan of uh, of uh, of Schmodown?" It's it, it's it, there's no argument to it. It was, def- it was definitely else. Um, <laughs> 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 no, it's you for sure. And um, hey, it, it is, it what's is up, guys uh, answering questions. <laughs> yeah, I'm very happy to see that people are um are enjoying. That the channel is up now and, and yeah. people are aware of it. It's I mean it's a full fight. It reminds me of like the old WWE network. Yeah, yeah. You, know, you can go back and you can just you can just visit it and you can see anything you want to see. Yeah. Um, so it's it's really great to have it up there. So you're gonna have to do a Hall of Fame at some point. You're gonna have to do a Hall of Fame ceremony where we each get our flowers, and get to deliver a speech. Well, I told you what I wanted to do. I said I right now for yeah. Patreon, for Patreon, yeah. if we if we get to once we get to ten thousand patrons, whenever the hell that is. Um, whenever we do, I'm gonna put a free event up for the free for all and pay for it for you know, obviously mm. no no I'm not gonna charge any tickets, I'm not gonna charge any to be first come, first served. Mm. Um, and we're gonna do a big free for all and have everybody back. And that could be probably from in 20 years from now. Everybody be like, oh, what? Why was the answer? <laughs> I don't know. Where's yeah. my cowboy hat? Every score shall be settled. I'm coming. Oh, I'm coming. Oh, Patriots on. once and for all, you sex of shit. <laughs> right. I'll be there. <laughs> um anyway so we got a lot to talk about man um the first thing that came up oh yeah no, good for me i didn't put any of the news stories in here that's that's great <laughs> i was working on a i was working on a freaking uh tight schedule today but we we figured it out somehow um, mm-hmm. um let me get let me get this acolyte photo because that's the that's the really the the main thing there was um i've been looking forward to this show i mean so yeah, yeah. for a lot of different reasons but I also am definitely not. I don't want to say skeptical, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. but I am. Um, I'm cautious. Is that a better yeah. word? I think yeah, cautiously optimistic. Yeah. Oh, I'm not going to say cautiously optimistic yet. Oh, okay. I'm just going to be cautious. Okay. Because I just I know I had this conversation last night. I was talking to somebody about it, and I was just like, right now mm-hmm. to me, like Dune is way better. Dune one and Dune two is way yeah. better on everything that they've done thus far with science fiction and they know their story and know what they were going to do and the, the fundamentals of what kind of star wars is that they did it and they did it better than what star wars is doing so i don't think star wars really has a lock on what they're doing right now yeah, yeah, yeah. um so it makes me uh it makes you a bit nervous but mm-hmm. i am i love 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 the time period that they're playing in yeah so yeah i I agree you know like you said it's not something we've seen before i think this is going to be an interesting decision um we're essentially getting a whole new time period opened up for us and it's our first live action look right at the high republic um time period yeah so that'll be interesting to give us a little idea of what that time period was like ahead of what we're going to be getting down the road from Star Wars, supposedly that's been announced, that's connected to the High Republic. So, well, we're not, we don't have a lot of stuff in High Republic, do we? I thought I thought we had a few, a couple things coming down connected to the High Republic. Oh, I guess the video game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's uh, yeah, the, yeah. The video game. There's one. There's there's that video game that's supposed to come out in I don't know three or four years from now, but it's like yeah. it's connected to the High Republic. I think beforehand, this is like oh. the end of the High Republic. The right. at the end of the High Republic, leading into the Phantom Menace, and like kind of right. like the I guess the first glimpses of the Sith. And the, but let's let's actually let's bring that up in the report that came out today. Okay. There's a tons tons of the information, and this particular report is the one from Star Wars News Net. Yeah. Our buddy over there, uh, Miguel Fernandez, writes: Lucasfilm has officially announced that the Acolyte is coming out on June 4th on Disney Plus. They have also released the first teaser poster, which you see, and confirmed that the official trailer is coming out tomorrow on March 19th, as well as a released slightly new synopsis. The trailer is set to come out on Tuesday at 8 a.m. Pacific time. And then this is the actual, well, the release date is definitely interesting, being a Mm -hmm. Tuesday. Uh, Previous reports had said Wednesday, June 5th, but does this mean a late evening release on the 4th, as they did with Ahsoka and their 6 uh, p.m. PST experiment? Or is this a Tuesday at midnight case? God, please tell me no. We we will probably find out closer to release. Also been word out there that a featurette or a new look at the show will be tied to the Phantom Menace's re-release in 
theaters on May 3rd, just one month before the show comes out. Right. Uh, all of that aside, very cool poster, yada, yada, a bit reminiscent of The Last Jedi's Darkness Rises and Light to Meat line, but it's mm -hmm. reversed now. Okay, the story is set 100 years before The Phantom Menace at the tail end of The High Republic, and here is the new synopsis. In the Acolyte, an investigation into a shocking crime spree pits a respected Jedi master, uh, played by Lee jung Jae, against a dangerous war fr warrior from his past, played by Amanda Stenberg. As more clues emerge, they travel down a dark path where sinister forces reveal all is not what it seems. Charles Soule, one of the High Republic writers, shared the poster on social media, adding, The Acolyte is even cooler than you are hoping. The Acolyte is eight episodes long. Amanda Stenberg leads a packed cast, uh, including Lei Shang Jie, Jody Turner Smith, Charlie Barnett, Dean Charles Chapman, Daphne Keene, Manny Jacinto, Carrie Ann Moss, Junis Sutamo, who is Chewbacca, of course, and Leslie Headland is the showrunner and lead writer. Uh, all right. So that's a lot of information there, John. Yeah. Um, the synopsis part is what stands out to me because I think this is one of the reasons why we got the delay from what the rumors were mm -hmm. is that there were reshoots, but there was also, it was, they were at one point saying this was a evil led story this yeah man. bad guys led story this synopsis says the other they're leading oh. with the jedi that is kind of doing an investigation yeah this what is uh this is dateline this is star wars dateline they're gonna yeah. find out what's going on no i mean look i like the idea everyone's into mystery and detective thriller stuff it's an interesting approach to take into star wars it's kind of a low-key approach so i wonder how they're going to go about doing this is it going to be the standard tropes of a detective story or is this going to be more just the idea that they're investigating this but it's going to have more intrigue but still very clearly a star wars show with all the tenets of a star wars show i'm curious to see because i mean andor showed us how they could make a take star wars into a completely new direction that nobody kind of had seen before and so will this be another thing like that where they make it feel more kind of grounded in, in terms of its approach and yeah. then move on to all the other elements, fantastical elements that are part of Star Wars. No, well, I like that the Andor reference is a good one because it's like mm -hmm. that's the whole point is that they're shooting it on location and there's not right. as much um there's not as much of the volume and I mean they'll certainly use it, but not as much as say the Mandalorian or or Obi-Wan or Boba Fett did. Um, they're doing more location stuff, which is great, which yeah. I think is another reason this is an expensive show. It's like yeah. uh, two hundred million dollars or something along the lines. Crazy. This Keanu Reeves thing, I wonder how true it is. Yes, um, the rumor. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's probably he's gonna. He was supposed to. Some people are saying Revan. From what the rumors are with Leslie Headland is that she really read up on a lot of the old school Sith stuff. And like this show, if it's done right, could really be up my alley. I mean, it's yeah. everything I love about the 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 Star Wars Sith lore and how the Sith started to make their plan to eventually infiltrate to get to the place that you know Palpatine eventually got to the teachings of uh, of Darth Bane and leading all that. If they follow all that stuff, I yeah. could geek i could find myself geeking out on it but like i told you in the beginning of this i'm hesitant because it yep. just seems like every show i get excited for every movie i get excited for i'm just like eh, okay you know, man, it's like andor and seasons one of seasons two of, of mandalorian yeah okay find some cool moments here and there the movies i haven't really i mean again talking about this last night i haven't rogue one yeah. rogue one the la last movie i was and when a rewatchable movie that i can watch over and over and over again but totally. It just, you know, it, it, I'm hoping, I'm hoping this one, um, and because it's not in the Filoni verse, hmm. how much time did Filoni give this? Yeah, I know. I wonder. And yeah. what were the reshoots all about? Was this right. more to make Andrew it or, 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 or fit in the Filoni verse, or was mm -hmm. it more to make it um, darker, like Andor? I don't know. So this, we're gonna find out obviously when we see it. But questions abound in with Filoni taking over the creative reins, you know. Well, I also think that the reason why, and I don't know if it was a Disney note, Filoni note, or whatever, mm -hmm. I think that they got cold feet when it came to leading a show with villains. Yeah. They had cold feet because you can't do it in the movie. They'll never do it in the movies. In the same way we always talk about how heel merchandise doesn't sell. Yeah. In, uh, in, they'll never, they will never do a Star Wars movie because there's too much money on the line. Like you can lead a smaller movie of the villain. You can, what's, what movie? Do you know big blockbuster movie? And you might be able to come up with a couple, but what big blockbuster movie leads with a villain? And I'm not talking about like you know a horror movie or those types. Right. I'm talking about big blockbuster 
hundred, two hundred million dollar movie, yeah. what movie leads to the villain? Maybe you can come up with a couple. It's tough to find. Yeah, and then because there's Deadpool, not a villain, anti-hero. Right. Um you like, can't even say Silence of the Lambs because that's Jodie Foster's movie where like, he yeah. helps. Right? And that's yeah. not a blockbuster. It, it did big numbers in Oscars. Right. Good point. A blockbuster yeah, yeah. movie. Um, so that's it, it that's where they get cold. Maybe feet. Joker. I think Joker is the most recent one Joker you could probably, argue. Yeah, but, but even that movie they didn't that, intend that to be a blockbuster. They didn't right. intend that movie right. to be a blockbuster. Right. They intend they, they that movie was okay, let's do a Joker movie for like sixty million dollars yeah. or whatever it is, <laughs> and it made something. a billion. So they yeah. got the that's what that's why yeah. it's so they didn't put when you put two hundred million and you can't it's very hard to figure it out like yeah. which ones did well. Um so they won't do that. But TV, TV, you can do it all day long. Oh, totally. TV, you can do it with I mean, Breaking Bad, Sopranos, you know. Um, Hannibal. Yeah, yeah. Hannibal. You thought they were going to do that with Boba Fett, you know, right. that they were going to do it, but they didn't. They turned him into, instead of even making a hand, anti-hero, they made him a hero. Right. Um, so I think they get cold feet. They're like, oh, I don't know, it's Star Wars. Shouldn't we just, shouldn't there, there be the good guys we're rooting for? It's like, it's okay to take that turn. Now, I say that without seeing the trailer. I say right, that right, without right, seeing right. anything else. They very well could lead you with that synopsis, lead you with that. And they said there's twists and turns that come that you go, oh, this really is a villain story. Yeah, yeah. So, so, so someone in the some, someone in the chat saying Joker was not a villain. Are you insane? Joker was totally a villain. What? Okay. Joker, no, they're, they're, not, they're not. They're kidding. Anyway, uh, but no, I hear you. You're right. We haven't seen it. But I mean, but this leads to a bigger question, Christian. And, and, and I, uh, you know, I ask you this. It occurs to me as you're talking right now. Yeah. What is the future? What is the step forward? Is the way forward to hearken back to George Lucas all the time? Is that the way we're going to do this? Or is the way forward what we got from Andor? That's the question, really, because are you going to bring outside people who have a much more edgy approach to Star Wars and have them do stuff within the framework of Star Wars? Or is this all going to have to keep hearkening back to George Lucas, keep hearkening back to these uh, to the original foundation of Star Wars, is that the way forward? Because if the reshoots were to go that direction, that could affect the tone, and we could get the jumbled stuff that we've gotten in the last few right. TV shows. Or did it go to darker because they go, this is what's getting us critical acclaim. This is what's getting us a little more attention outside the bubble of Star Wars fans. Yeah. It's a curious question as I look at it right now. Dude, they brought in the showrunner for Russian Doll. So yeah, they were definitely going for a sh to take a shot here at a darker tone. So this yes. is, uh, you know, I, I just want to see how much inf interference played, if at all, um, yeah. with this. So it's very, I'm very curious to see this trailer. Now, before we move on to the next topic, this is the conversation I had with um, Steph and Mike. In this trailer, yeah. what? well, let me ask you two questions. In the series and in the trailer, one, do you think that Yoda is going to be in the series? Two, do you think Yoda is going to be in the trailer? All right. If I do think Yoda will be in the series, and if he shows up in the trailer, I think it'll be like from behind, or we'll hear it in the dark of uh, like a line of his in black frame or something. That's about the extent of it that I would think. You don't want to blow your wad and show Yoda strongly in the trailer, especially because you're launching all these new characters at this time period. So, um, but I do think we'll see him in the series, maybe for an episode or two. Uh, but I think if the, in the trailer you'll just see the outline from behind or some dialogue, a line of dialogue that is in the dark. Now, if they were going to show the same trailer that they showed at Celebration from okay. two years ago, well, then I'd say, no, Yoda's not going to show up in this trailer. Right. Um, but from what it looks like is that this is a completely different show from what yeah. they showed last time in the same way that Rogue One was a different movie that they yeah. showed in that trailer. I think he's in the series. I think he's in the trailer. And I'll tell you why I think he's in the trailer yeah. more so than just silhouette is because of the fear that people won't know what the show is and that they want to go in the same way that they're going the Mandalorian and Grogu. <laughs> because they know and Grogu is going to get people to go, ooh, in the same way that they go, what is this? Is this the act? Oh, is that Yoda? Yoda's in this show? I'll watch it for the casual right. fan. Right. That's a way to let people know. No, it's not necessarily the Skywalkers and anybody that you know, but you know Yoda, he'll be there. And you like baby Yoda, and Yoda's only around, he's 100 years, a little more pep in his step, a little 100 <laughs> years younger. So I think that if it's brief, but they let you know that he's in it, um, and if he's not in it, if he's not in the trailer, okay. Yeah. If he's not in the show, colossal error. I agree, 100%. Colossal. Where is he?
Is a Jedi are running around all over the place? Where's Yoda? Oh, he's on a mission somewhere. Okay, well, at least mention him. Got to be in it. Be stupid not to have him in it because it doesn't make sense. Not for anything to. And I don't know if anybody's saying in the in the chat I didn't look, but if mm -hmm. and so you got to get away from original characters. Sure, when it's not necessary for them to be there. Like right. I always pushed back for people who were like, "Well, Luke shouldn't have been the one that rescued him. Why? He was the most powerful Jedi at the yeah. time. If anyone's going to hear that beacon, it's going to be Luke. Yeah, had to be Luke." It made sense that it was Luke in the same way that Yoda needs to be, even if he's on the Jedi Council, needs to be there. Yeah, Luke's still atoning for leaving yep. uh, uh, Dagobah early and for the death of Yoda. So, of course, he's going to hear that beacon signal, run, come right in yeah. and, and do the rescue. And I agree with you. you got to have Yoda in the series. You, can, you can't make that mistake of not having him in the series. got to be in there because you, you you serve two masters. One, you're, gonna, you're allowed the series to be itself, its own thing, but you still have something there for the casual fans, as you said earlier, to connect to and be be at least give it a shot and see right. if it's worth their time or not. But, yeah. And that's the same thing that I would say about both Factor and AG1. You want to be able to <laughs> okay. shot. You want to make sure, because I love it. I get so many, John, I've been getting, since we've been talking Ooh. about them, getting yeah. so many people trying it, loving it. And I will tell you both about uh, AG1 and Factor right now, guys. And then we'll talk about some more stories on the other side. All right, guys, let's talk about AG1. You guys know I love AG1. If you've been listening to my show, You've heard me talk about them, and I've been drinking them for about two years now, and I love it. Never been a vitamins guy. I've told you that. I take it all one shot, AG1. I put it in a water bottle. I shake it up. I'm good to go. I recommend AG1 to my friends. I recommend AG1 to my family, everybody. AG1 is a team of doctors and scientists. It is tested for 950 contaminants and NSF certified for sport. It is formulated based on the latest science and maintains high quality standards you guys know they've been with us for a while because you guys know too you've all been checking them out and everybody who's been signing up to ag1 says the same thing it's changed your energy it's changed how you approach things in a day you're smiling more you're running around the place and you're sleeping better i know ag1 is the supplement that i trust to provide the support my body needs daily and that's why they've been a partner for so long if you want to take ownership of your health, it starts with AG1. Try AG1 and you get a free one-year supply of vitamin D3, K2, and five free AG1 travel packs with your first purchase. Go to drinkag1.com slash big thing. Drinkag1.com slash big thing. Check it out. Excited to talk to you guys about Factor, man. You know, it's not always easy to eat better, but it is with Factor. Because they have delicious, ready-to-eat meals. It's every one of them. is It's fresh. It's never frozen. It is chef-crafted. It's dietitian approved And it's ready to go. This is the best part. Two minutes. You'll have over 35 different options to choose from each week, whether it's Calorie Smart, Protein Plus, all of it. And there are more than 60 add-ons to help you stay fueled up and feeling good all day. What are you waiting for? Two-minute meals. And there's a lot of great stuff. Pancakes, smoothies. There's no prep. There's no mess meals. It's flexible for your schedule. Factor is the perfect solution if you're looking for fast premium options with no cooking required. You just sign up and you save. You head to factormeals.com slash big thing fifty, but you gotta use that code big thing fifty. And what happens when you use big thing fifty? You get fifty percent off. That's big thing fifty at factormeals.com slash big thing fifty. And you get fifty percent off. All right, thank you to our friends over at AG1 and Factor. As I mentioned before we went to our sponsors, that I am so grateful because I, as and it's always on the weekends, which is great, I get some DMs of people going, hey, I signed up, I heard that it helps the show, and I've really gotten them. I've tried both Factor, I tried AG1, and people love it. So if you are able to have the means, I put the link in the description, I always pin it as the top comment. All right, Johnny, uh, we got some more stuff, man. And this was this was kind of based stuff. Normally, you know, I don't love your tweets, um, <laughs> but, but I will I will tell you that I I understood I understood your tweets. Um, Did you know? It, yeah, when it came to this one, let me see if Which I can one? find it. It's uh, it's here somewhere. I didn't. For gosh sakes, you, okay, can I, it. Will you look? Can I give some love to Ann Porkins? Ann oh, Porkins. Yeah, sure. sure. Mm, thank you for the food and drink, Daddy Harlow. First of all, Ann Porkins, great name. Uh, yeah. give, give some love there. I love the avatar too. So anyway, sorry. Go ahead. Yeah. Uh, it's it's this one. It's hey, it's, it's war. 
Civil War, man. So Civil War in general, of uh, what's going on with the movie. Wow. It's it screened at South by Southwest. People are looking forward to this movie so much yeah. and curious about this movie because of Alice Garland showed that brilliance with Ex Machina. And since then, his movies have been okay. Okay, yeah. right? Yeah. And now this one comes out. It's very controversial, obviously. But there is this... Uh, there's the screening that they had at South by and everybody was losing their mind and the word masterpiece started getting thrown out there all over the place. And the critics that saw it were using that word and the critics who didn't took umbrance with the yeah. fact that people were using that word. But this is an article about one of the most dark horizons. One of the most talked about elements of civil war in early reviews is that it has been fairly apolitical. The story takes place in the United States in the not-so-distant future where 19 states have succeeded from the Union and are made up of factions. The narrative follows a war zone photographer and others making their way across a country gone mad. As a result, it stays on the sidelines in a conflict which is not a red versus blue state, and it uh, observes it in a relatively objectively way, objective way, choosing to serve as an examination of the dangers of polarization as opposed to simply fueling the fires of one political stance has drawn criticism from people. Some want him to offer more explicit connections to real life. Others aren't happy that the film doesn't choose a side. Garland doesn't care. Speaking with The Hollywood Reporter in the wake of the film's premiere, he says the last thing he wants to do is lecture people. He says, why are we talking and not listening? We've lost trust in the media and politicians, and some in the media are wonderful, and some politicians are wonderful on both sides of the divide. I have a political position, and I have good friends on the other side of that political divide. Honestly, I'm not trying to be cute. What's so hard about that? Why are we shutting down conversation? Left and right are ideological arguments about how to run a state. That's all that they are. They are not right or wrong or good or bad. It's which do you think has greater efficiency. That's it. You try one, and if that doesn't work out, you vote it out, and you try again in a different way. That's a process. But we've made it into good and bad. We've made it into a moral issue, and it's fucking idiotic, and it's incredibly dangerous. I personally blame some of it on social media. There is an interaction that exists human to human that floats away when it reaches a public forum. Let, let, let me do this. <laughs> fucking brilliant uh -huh. brilliant mm -hmm. brilliant i hate social media when it comes to this stuff it has absolutely turned it into yankees versus red sox because mm -hmm. god forbid you have like if we've got friends that are so far on side of the the aisle on certain things that if you even mention well you know so and so from that side said that uh that made an interesting point wait you think they made an interesting point yeah, I think they made an interesting point because I'm a human yeah. being. I listen to what they say. doesn't mean that I'm a good or bad guy. It means I'm listening to a point that I said, and that's what he's saying, conversation. I love that he doesn't take a fucking stance in this movie. Mm -hmm. I love that he doesn't. He shouldn't take a stance in this movie. It's not It's not about what team you playing for, Alex. Right. What team you playing for? He's telling a story. He's telling a fucking story. And, and so I'm, I'm very excited. I was excited for this movie. Mm -hmm. I'm more excited. Brilliant fucking conversation. Brilliant. I wish people would listen to him on this because no one does. Well, yes, I agree with his basic premise. If you can have people who legitimately want to sit down and have a conversation and exchange ideas, exchange points of views, and legitimately look at things and accept a legitimate basic foundation of truth, then yes, you can have conversations. You can find middle ground. Yes, you're not always going to be able to get everything you want. That's compromise. That is the foundation of the United States of America is compromise. All right. And that's where the problem lies. What you're talking about is where the problem lies. People on both sides of the aisle, uh, the extreme people on both sides, have become way too impossible to have okay. conversations with. I agree. To get there, because if you, one side of the aisle, the extreme, you say, this other person made a sense, they go crazy. The other side of the aisle, you say one person made sense on the other side, oh, yeah. they go crazy. So it goes yeah. both ways. 100%. And think, yeah. And I think what Alex is saying is correct. When did it become terrible? And it became terrible because people started buying into the fact that this is the future of the country. The soul of the country is at stake. Team, and they bought yeah. into all this stuff. Both sides, again. Yeah. Both it's, sides. Team, it's team versus team. It's right. team versus team. It's, no, it's, no longer, it's no longer one thing mm -hmm. of like opposing points of views. Right. Of like, oh, yeah, I remember being, I remember back when, even when, when, because when Bush was president, and I remember yeah. Um, yeah. friends that were, uh, on one side of the aisle and the other side sure. of the aisle, we had conversations Ooh. and be like, you really, you think that's a good decision that he's making? And other people were like, really? And, and that was it. There was none of right. this fucking like 
really crazy. Um, again, it feels like two different countries. It does. And right. so I think that this is an absolute, I, I love this statement. I love this statement. Yeah. I can't wait for it. But to jump into the other stuff, though, the critical acclaim that the movie's getting, yeah, yeah. as I said, I don't, I always, when, when you tweet, I go, uh oh, what's he doing? And when I saw it, like you were like, yeah, listen, when do we get to this place where critics who didn't see a movie yeah. are going after other critics for saying that it's good? Like, yeah. What, what did that happen? Like, what, what, they, because they didn't get to see it. So they're like, well, wait a minute. Don't you say, don't say that yet because I didn't see it and I didn't get to make my judgment on it. It's like, what are you talking about? Yeah, it, it's mind blowing to me because they become gatekeepers of the word masterpiece. And it's like, it's not your fucking job to be gatekeepers of the word masterpiece. Masterpiece happens when a majority of critics feel a film is a masterpiece. Then it kind of arbitrarily becomes a masterpiece. And it always takes time for a film to become a masterpiece. Now, you might get mad. Too many critics are using it or they're trying to get quoted or whatever. But that's irrelevant to the situation, right? Because I think you're attacking other critics for their opinions and their points of views, which they have every right to have. And I just don't understand how you can do that when you haven't seen the movie. If you've seen the movie, great. Quote, tweet them, and then counter their points. Or if you agree with their points, right. great. Go and agree with their points and quote tweet them again. But this whole getting angry at other critics, it just helps fuel the divide that is already there right. between fans and critics, where fans are already half listening critic to critics to begin with and want to denigrate critics. Now you're helping them do so by attacking other critics. Yeah. And then you haven't seen the movie for their hyperbole when you yourself have been hyperbolic about other films in the past that other people didn't feel the same way about. I just don't understand the logic of that. It's and not doesn't it now, but that doesn't now taint those critics a paint uh like you can't take them seriously now because if they don't like it, you're like, Well, yeah, well, we knew you weren't gonna like it because you couldn't like it because now. If you go back and go, right. I was wrong because good on the people that say, "Look, I was wrong. I, right. I, it was a masterpiece." Right, right. Then I'll take you at merit if you like. You. But then again, it's like maybe why are you saying that? Then it's like because you're seeing if you're tweeting that before you're seeing anything, and you're calling people out for seeing it when you are part of the industry that's going to be reviewing it. Yeah, yeah. How can I take you serious? Because it's like now it's like you almost kind of have to not like it. And if you don't like it, then yeah. I'm not going to really believe you anyway. Because I go, of course, because you don't have egg on your face. For saying, there's, you know, there, There's so much anger, jealousy, and frustration in certain sections of the punditry critic sphere because certain people aren't where they want to be or certain people are achieving or they get mad because certain people feel like they're bought and paid for for their criticisms and all this kind of stuff. And it just becomes nonsense after a while that it becomes white noise. And yeah. you just go, look, I just want to pick some critics that I trust. I'm going to go see the films that they, they, they like. And that's that, you know, you, you know, you and I, uh, you know, we, we have our opinions. You can quote, quote, call us critics. We mm -hmm. have our reviews. We put our stuff out there. People listen to us or don't listen to us. And they have their choice to do so. But we, uh, years of experience, can review a movie and give our honest thoughts on it. Right? I was, I was watching Jeremy Johns this morning again. Great review he had on Rebel Moon Part 1. Quick six and a half minutes. That yeah. guy's mastered it, right? Yeah. You watch that stuff and you go, okay, now I have a good idea where I'm going to go. Right. And I think that's the thing that's important here is you have to remember, like, critics are there to give you a um, a guideline and a and a and and push you in a certain direction. And, and yeah. then you can go that direction or at least give it a chance but other critics coming after other critics, I think that opens the door to other critics coming after you. And I do think a lot of it is because, oh, I didn't get access to this movie first. And somehow that means my status is lesser than. So I'm going to get mad at other people who got access to it first. See and, it. You're and, getting and mad at the movie. And that's a mistake. Yeah. And until, like I said, it just it's just harder for me to take them serious when their review comes out. Mm -hmm. Like, it's different. If you, I, I, yeah. It's different if someone said, like, well... I actually saw the movie as well, and I don't think it's a masterpiece. And my yeah. thoughts on that is because this, I'm like, okay, well, they just had a different opinion. He's, the person saw the movie, so they just didn't see right. it the same way. So I wonder what I'll feel like when I see it, as opposed yeah. to someone who's just like, here we go again. Someone saying it's a masterpiece when this and this. It's like, yeah, it's. Uh, the, so it, I thought it was. I thought it was pretty, uh, pretty trivial to be honest. But um, yeah. All right, moving on. There's some more stories, big stories, and that's uh, Dune, mm -hmm. man. Yeah, it's 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 crossed five hundred. Still think it's going to hit a billion. <laughs> well, we're almost we got there in what two weeks, three weeks, five hundred million. Come right. on, yeah. Do you still do you still think it's going to make a billion? I'm it's asking. Got legs. It's got legs. The it's sand legs. is slow. The sand is slow, my man. You but it's got legs. Five hundred million. <laughs> uh, ain't gonna happen. Uh, and 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 I hope that I'm wrong. So <laughs> Dune, but it does overtake the first one in over two weeks. 
it's already it's yeah. a box office hit. Uh, by the end of the weekend, I think right now it's reportedly it's over four ninety four, and it's globally two hundred eight million from North America and about two eighty nine point four internationally. The title is expected to surpass five hundred million mark. I think it's already done that. A rare event in post pandemic times. Unsurprisingly, it's the highest grossing film of the year so far. Yeah. Uh, more importantly, it is now completely outgrossed Dune One. By late last weekend, it had surpassed the entire domestic tally of the first film in North America. By the end of the weekend, it's well ahead of its predecessor worldwide, with the 2021 have generated 433. Glowing word of mouth and interest in premium formats have seen sales remaining strong, which has surpassed a 100 million haul just from IMAX alone. The film costs 190 to produce, and it's estimated to cost roughly 100 million to promote. Uh, logically, the film needs to hit the 600 million to be in profit. Something that looks quite likely to achieve. Uh, yeah, let's. And the other, so the other stuff that's going on, it wasn't, but it wasn't number one. By no. the way, by the no. way, um, Kung Fu Panda once yeah. again was. I saw I saw this again with my with my my little one. Yeah. Um, I said, "Did you like it?" She's like, "I liked it too long." <laughs> she said, "I think it's like an hour and a half." She's just, she's ready to go. Uh, too long. But I didn't watch. But 176 million dollars is yeah. what's made worldwide so far. That movie, yeah. Kung Fu Panda. It's it's dude. It only cost 90 million to make. Yeah, so you make any money? You make any money, man? And that, and that and but you lost quality. You lo that's that's one of those movies where it's like okay, you see, hey, we want to make a fourth one. And you right. say, it's like okay, but do we? The other movies we've spent, we spent like 150, 200. We got to get Angelina Jolie. We got to get Seth Rogen back. We got to yeah. the guy raises his hand in the back like. What if we just do it with Jack Black and then we like bring in Aquafina? She does every voice for every animated thing right now. Let's just do that. We can we get her that? TV money. We can get and her like, TV okay. Money. And then bring back Brian Cranston. Yeah, bring back Brian Cranston. We'd, let's make it for like 80 million instead of 200. But it means the quality might go down a little bit. Yeah. Who cares? The kids will see it. And it sucks that that's probably the conversation, but it's like, <laughs> it, that's what happened and it's going to make money. Yeah. And it was, it was business decision. It's definitely the worst of the four business mm. decision made a lot of sense the way that they did it i just wish it would have been as clever and had as much heart as the originals do well i mean this if nothing else yeah. this gives them the opportunity to do another one because yeah. it's made yeah. so much money yeah and now that it's made so much money maybe they can be like okay we'll spend a little bit more since the market is still there for this franchise because it's been a while since the sure. third one. so sure. maybe they they look at it that we'll spend a little bit see what the reaction is oh great they loved it all right we'll spend a little bit more bring back the five or whatever and uh, and go from there and see what we can create so because i, I yeah. think that's that's the smart move at this point seeing how positive the reaction has been overall in terms of financial re mm -hmm. uh, results you know i'm so confused to see someone say not just kids I mean, yeah i know never said an animation was just for kids yeah i don't, I don't I'm I'm saying that I don't, I don't understand that all right um <laughs> so, the other the other thing that mm -hmm. i would say is that thou godzilla vs kong yeah it's coming out. It's targeting a forty-five to fifty million dollar launch. Um, now I can guarantee you this movie did not cost eighty million dollars. Um, Legendary Entertainment and Warner Brothers Pictures still flying high at the success of Dune Part Two, set for another hit over the Easter weekend with Godzilla, yeah, and Kong: The New Empire. The New Empire, the fifth film in the MonsterVerse saga, <laughs> is currently tracking at forty-five to fifty, according to short-term projections, a considerably better number than the pandemic impacted opening of godzilla vs kong which debuted at 31.6 despite that soft start for that movie that made 470 worldwide and has wow. remained the highest grossing day and date streaming theatrical title ever it's expected that with the new film overall monsterverse franchise will pass the two million total mark the new movie has kong and godzilla kind of teaming up yada 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 uh, the film will open after the release of ghostbusters frozen empire which openings opens this coming friday and it's currently expected to pull in between 35 to 47 on its opening on par with its predecessor. Um, all right. So this movie, the two movies, both of them. Yeah. Godzilla. I mean, excuse me. Ghostbusters is screening on Tuesday and Wednesday. And I think that the embargo lifts on that Wednesday. Right. Why am I alone on the screen right now? Are you? Oh, sorry. No, not on purpose. Yes, I, was me. I wasn't yeah. paying attention. But no so, worries, so two so Ghostbusters, I think the embargo drops on either maybe that Wednesday, so yeah. two days before release. Not the best. Yeah, um, I know. Godzilla and Kong, though, 
I'm seeing a screening in a, on Wednesday, and the embargo drops on that Thursday. At least you get a screening. There's no screening in San Diego for Godzilla oh, really? Kong. Yeah, okay. I, I was talked to the publicists. Yeah, down here, I usually hook them up with screens. They're like, there are certain cities they're not showing this in, mm. and the reason may be because it's not. He didn't say that, but he, he, I'm I'm intimating that the reason may be because they don't think this is a good movie, which would oh. fucking suck that they keep fucking up these movies. You want to talk about Kung Fu Panda? They're messing this, these movies up because people want to see good movies from this franchise, dude. I, I know, but especially after you get a movie like Godzilla, you know, minus one. one. Yeah. And it just shows you, though, this is what this, to me, this is a good move by them by not screening it or, or drift, dropping the embargo into this because yeah. this is a movie you don't want, you don't want critics to taint yeah. anything and just like, it's just you shove popcorn in your face. You're going to watch the UFC fight, or yeah. you know, between Godzilla and Kong versus all the different monsters. You do not expect this is the same thing. This is the, yeah. this is the mentality I went into with minus one, and thankfully that mentality was wrong. But this is the mentality you have to go into these movies. Don't care about the humans. Yes. Do not try to care about them. Don't even listen to what their stories are about. <laughs> it doesn't matter. It matter. It's it's going to be stupid writing, yeah. dumb reactions, bad comedy. You don't need it. all. You are if you go there just to watch the big monkey and the big lizard fight other things, you'll have fun. Yeah. And if you shut your brain off and you do that, they'll give you enough. They're running. I mean, come on. At one point, Kong is riding on Godzilla. I mean, it's just <laughs> stupid. But it's like, but it's but if you go in with that mentality, you can have fun. This is the one where you question if a critic calls it a masterpiece. This is the yeah, one. Right. Where you know, you're right. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah. Yeah. Look, right. I, and the, the Ghostbusters one, I'm seeing it tomorrow night, so I'm looking forward to it. I hope it's yeah. good. But yeah, this, I mean, I, I, I didn't even, like, it's crazy. I'm going to have to watch this thing on a Thursday, probably in the afternoon, and then run right home and, and do a, a attitude of reaction because I want to see what this one's all about. But yes, yeah. you're right. This yeah, is the one you you reacted. Go, social, the social embargoes dropped for both of these, like, after. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. See, there you go. Yeah. I think WB, though, and WB has been the studio that's slowly starting to kind of do this with their with certain films. Like, they're like, we're going to drop these just before mm -hmm. they come out because we know that critics can actually affect the box office on this, but we don't give a fuck about them affecting the box. So they, they'll come out for the other stuff. But this is the, these are the ones that we're not going to waste right. time. Like, we want people raving about Dune. We don't yeah. want people shitting on. You know, the right. same like Aquaman, the same with like, their strategy behind it is not stupid. Hey, it, Aquaman, wait, almost 500 million. Yeah, so, yeah, not stupid. In the same way that they know people are going to do exactly what I just said, I just want to mm -hmm. watch Godzilla and Kong fight. And yeah. they don't want to hear, like, ah, I heard it wasn't that good. It's like, yeah, but you still get to see him fight. Right. Like, you know, you're not getting like people because fair or unfair, people, and they know this, people yeah. will be comparing this movie to Godzilla minus one. Oh, 100%. With different movies. Yeah. Even though they have Godzilla in it, they're different movies. People will be comparing them right. because Godzilla minus one showed you that you can do a big budget monster movie yeah. and care about other people besides just the monsters. Yeah, yeah. So, um, and they've and, got a popcorn bucket for this one too, man. So okay, right. do they? Do they have? Is there yeah, a big one? yeah. They do. So, it, you know, it's it's we'll we'll, we'll see. All right, we got a bunch of questions as I mentioned before. Oh, yeah. Um. Throw your comments in there. John and I will be getting to all of them. I'm going to cover one more story, and then, you know, we'll do a little shorter of a, a show today. And um, but we'll get to all your questions, no matter what. So I just only so many topics that we can cover today. Um, oh, let's do this. Rebel Moon, the second trailer. I didn't get a chance to see it. John told me before we went on the air that Rebel Moon it dropped. He had, you, you should check out John's trailer reaction. He he did one. Um, yeah. What did uh What did you think of the trailer? I liked the trailer for what it was, which right. is if you're a Zack Snyder person, this is a trailer that works for you because it's just all action sequences, fight sequences, battle sequences, letting you know that this second movie or the second part is going to be very focused on fighting the armies of the mother world and Korra getting everybody together and putting it and getting the team to fight. Uh, and of course, Ed Screen will be back as the villain. So you're going to have all of that. So the trailer accomplished that. I would have liked to have seen a bit more of the story, a bit more of the background on these characters and the yeah. reasons for why they're doing the things they're doing. But you get a little more Hopkins uh, as the droid character there, which I like. Uh, and you get more with her, with Sofia Batella, who's a who's a badass. Chris, I'll be real curious to see what you think 
Um, when you see the lightsaber sequences, essentially the space swords, In which the becomes movie. very big part of the trailer as the trailer goes along. So I do have to finish the first movie. I have to finish it. I'll tell you what did I watch? What did I oh I watched um and this time ago, I'm gonna go back because I do on Patreon, I do a, a what I'm watching and I summarize for the whole month like things that I've watched. Nice. And I just watched, I was do you remember that movie Rad in the nineteen? Yeah, of course, the bike movie, of One course. Of my favorite movies of all time. So I randomly i on siri in my living room yeah. i go hey siri play this whatever it was and it said and this is so bizarre and it wasn't anywhere near rad and it said now playing rad soundtrack from 19 i'm like whoa <laughs> this is great so i started listening to the rad soundtrack and then yeah. randomly we were when i took my daughter to see uh kung fu panda they do those fathom events yeah, yeah. rad is playing in yeah it's a, you could probably find I, it in san diego dude like it, they're doing they're doing a, a screening of it so i was like I'm not going to make the screening, so let me find it. So I bought it on Apple, and, <laughs> and I watched it. I watched the whole thing the other day. I was just like, I should be watching other stuff. I know I should be. I got I got Roxy telling me I should watch things. I still haven't watched Shogun. I should be watching all yeah. these things. Instead, I watched Rat, and I regret <laughs> nothing. Um, and there was, I'm trying to think if there's anything else. I watched something else. I can't remember what it was, but that was mm -hmm. the main stuff. That, that I really wanted to get to, and I got to Rad, so I'm very excited about that. <laughs> Have um, you watched Monarch at all, or Masters of the Air? I watched the first, uh, Monarch, I watched the first, like, two episodes, yeah. liked it, and I, again, wanted to finish it. Right. Masters of the Air, dude, like, I'm a big Band of Brothers guy. Yeah. And big, uh, and what's the other one, too, is the... the oh, uh, uh, yeah, uh, the Pacific. Yeah, 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 that was the other one. Both, both of those I yeah. liked a lot. This felt like they're playing dress-up. Yeah. Yeah. Did you watch it? Sorry, man, I'm flying a plane, man. It, uh, it, it, didn't feel, it didn't feel authentic. Yeah, I don't... Yeah, because, dude, we're we're too far away now. And I think the actors yeah. don't really connect to that time period, right? We're at, right. We're at grandfather, great-grandfather level mm -hmm. now for people that would be connected to anyone who was alive during World War II, right? So it's like that kind of thing is where we're at now. And I don't know if the actors necessarily uh, understand. Yeah, I, didn't hear, I hear you saying, I hear you saying yeah. they can't connect to it as much. I mean, I remember Memphis bell. That's a fucking, I know, no, no. yeah, but, yeah, yeah. It's just, it was just something about it. I just felt like, you know, and Roxy said it get better. It gets better after episode two or mm. two or three, but like, I just, I, it just, I was watching my wife. She said the same thing. It just, it didn't feel like they were there. It just felt like they were like, mm. I, felt like I was watching a play. Oh wow! Okay, like, yeah, like, yeah. like okay, this is what it should. This is this is the way it should be in, right. in 1940, 1944, whatever, forty three, whatever year it yeah, is. Yeah. And I'm like, yeah, I just just didn't buy it. So I never really got too invested in it. Um, but anyway, uh, yeah. all right, yeah. we're, we're gonna move to questions. And okay. before I do that, so I told you, John, last time. Now, I, last time I had I had the Vessi, um, I had the, the gray ones, but they sent me the black ones. Yeah. yeah. Um. Vessi, especially you know, because we're going to be taking oh. this trip, we're going to be doing this New York thing soon, man. And um, and Vessi, Vessi's great shoes for weather. And the great thing is that if for March, they they've designed they've designed these shoes for springs unpredictable weather, and it's it's they're great. I love them. They're, they're just they slip on so fast too. I love that they have these these. I have they sent me the the high tops. I don't have those on right now, but they sent me the high tops, which are great. And they're just, they really are my go-to for, I, I, they're so easy. I love them here. And it doesn't matter what city you're in, whether you're in your LA, New York, doesn't matter where you are. Um, you have an idea if they, 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 you can wear these on like snowy trails, like wet streets, the, the way that they are um, designed is just flawless. And it's whether you're facing unexpected snow and slippery paths, you can really, really be uh, crucial to your everyday um, and if we had that rose rainstorms like mm -hmm. last was it, mm -hmm. two weeks ago, and I was wearing these things, it's perfect. It kept my feet so comfortable. Um, it doesn't matter. You get beach days, snowy commutes, storm burst vesties. They excel in any scenario, and they provide to be versatile choice for any any activity involving water. It's so great. Um, so what I would tell you, you what you want to do is you want to elevate your spring wardrobe travel with the Vessi Stormburst shoes. You can go to Vessi.com slash big thing and you get your pair today to get an automatic 15% off your first purchase at checkout and be ready to step out in style, rain or shine. And choosing Vessi means stepping into any travel adventures prepared for any weather. You got a Vessi.com slash big thing and find the perfect blend i had a bunch of people who are already ordered these things and they're already loving them so head on over there and get your vessies today and the other thing you want to check out is zbiotics 
And Zbiotics, thank God, I went to a wedding last night, and Zbiotics is the reason that I am able to be here with you today. Um, they are the maker of the world's first genetically engineered probiotic. It, you got to take your f- first drink of the night for a better tomorrow. Fact. It's engineered by a team of microbiologists, and Zbiotics is a, pro- a probiotic drink that breaks down the byproduct of alcohol, which is responsible for rough mornings after drinking. So you have a Zbiotic for the best results. You take your first drink of the night before you do anything else. You pace yourself, you hydrate, and you get a good night's sleep. And then you wake up feeling refreshed and ready to take on the day. I love it. It is game changer. I'm not young enough to be able to just do what I did when I was younger. Don't do it anymore. I take Zbiotic. I'm feeling good today. And every time I have a Zbiotic before drinks, I notice a difference the next day. Even a night out, I can confidently plan on it and doing shows, I'm moving. So I gave Zbiotics a try when they first came to the show. I drank it uh, last night before this wedding, and I'm telling you, I'm top of my game right now. You wouldn't even be able to tell uh, that I was drinking last night. So this year, I'm going to form a more sustainable and better me podcasting, doing all this stuff. This is not an all-or-nothing approach. So you got to go to zbiotics.com slash big thing and use that code big thing. You check out for 15% off. And thank you to Zbiotics for sponsoring this episode and for all the good times. Yeah. You got it nice. at our age. You kidding me? <laughs> you need it. You need, you need it. it. All right. We got lots of questions, Johnny. A lot of, a lot oh. of questions here. Let's Ooh. do it. Let's, let's get to the questions here and, and you guys keep firing them in. Yeah. And we will get to all of them, and then we'll uh, we'll call it a day. Right, call it a night. Well, that's a statement, though. What else would you call it? Of course, you're gonna call it a day. <laughs> I'm just saying, I'm gonna call it a day. Well, what else would you call it? A, a bagel? Um, okay. Hank Pym, he's back. Hey. Massive fans since AMC. Thanks, man. I must say that I think your X Men solo movie plan is your worst take. Eat shit. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. Could you explain it so I can understand? I'm not saying every single X Men. I'm saying that. If you were going to do a Wolverine movie, Cyclops, and you could put Wolf, <laughs> put Cyclops in the movie, you could put Wolverine in there, you could put Storm in, you could put everybody in their movies in the same way that you did Iron Man movies, mm. because th- these little side Marvel characters that they have now are not cutting it. It ain't working. And if you lead, if you do three solo movies of your big X Men characters that ultimately lead to a big event and introduce the other X Men throughout it. It's like wrestling. You're building up your characters throughout it to when you get to that big event like the Avengers, you've done three movies that you can make for $80, $90 million, make a big profit on them to get to that big event. And then you can spend $200, $300 million on the first X-Men movie because you need something to do past the multiverse sagas. You need something to do. And X-Men will plan you into 10 years. So I'll push back on anybody who doesn't think it's a good take because it is absolutely something I've heard executives talk about, like maybe potentially doing. So, yeah. it's, so you, the egg's going to be on people's faces. Um, so it's Christian. Yeah, says me. Yeah, uh, but thank you, Hank. That was very, it was very nice. Um, well, what can I say? He said I have a worse take, but he still gave us five bucks to tell me it. So I can't yeah. really want to say. And it was nice, and he said, and he said it nice. Yeah. Um, Mike Joyce, are you excited for a new Ghostbusters? The last one wasn't that great. Should they do a full reboot? So the the reason I am excited is because I'm going to disagree with you. I loved the last yeah. one. Yeah. I loved the last one. I thought it was such a great family movie. I I had so much fun with my with my daughter and my and my wife watching that movie. It was it captured the essence and it leads into me caring more. Yeah. Do you do you do you care about them too? I loved it. I thought it was a really sweet movie, and I like the I like McKenna Grace Finn Wolfhard introduction. I'm a big fan of Carrie Coon, so getting her. Being a part of the franchise, I think, is a really smart move because that's a that's a independent movie actress you're bringing into yeah. a blockbuster to really kind of put a strong foothold in the ground. Then you have Paul Rudd to provide the comic right. relief, and I loved the ending, and I did like Harold Ramis showing up in that oh, way. I thought that was a I, smart I here. I got here. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And so going into this one, this is now going back to New York. This is, and look, this one made well over two hundred million dollars. Ghostbusters Afterlife. So there is no need to reboot in twenty twenty one. Right, in, right, right, during right. COVID. Yeah. So it made its it made good money for what it was in the situations around it. So there's no need to reboot, you know, because it, it's being received really well. And this one, early people I've spoken to who've seen it early said it's really good. So oh, we'll good. I like that's it. true tomorrow night. We'll yeah. Um fingers crossed. Yeah. Uh following up, my choice said you show off your dance moves at, at Steph's wedding last yeah. night. Um n- yeah, a little bit, but uh, but we 
got kids, man. Sunday, Steph understood. Sunday night, we had to. We, we it was beautiful, and we had to. Uh, we had we had to run um, after, but it was great. We stayed yeah. for oh, quite a while, but it was. Yes, all the picture is beautiful. She looked fantastic. She so was great, great to see. Yeah. She's one of my favorite her. people in the world. I love her to death. Yeah. Um, Kenneth Colton. Over the weekend, I've seen many reports saying Marvel plan to still use Kang in Phase Five. I wonder who would they recast if these reports are true, and is this a good season? Well. Uh, who they who are they, they the main mention is um Coleman Coleman yeah, Domingo, Coleman, right? Domingo. He's, he's the main he's I think that's gonna happen. Yeah, I think that's gonna happen. And I think that's that a smart move. Listen, man, if their story was so far past being able to reboot or in or, or to to pivot, and then you sit in a room and you go, We can't. We yeah. literally cannot pivot in without pushing back five to ten years worth of stuff. Yeah. And then you had to recast. Sometimes, sometimes you have a strong point of view on certain, and, and and then something comes along that changes your mind, right? And so I was very clear, no Kang, because every time you mention Kang, you just think of Jonathan Majors and the harassment stuff. Well, Coleman Domingo is a universally beloved actor now, and people are so much in his corner. His other film that's going to come out here in 2024 is supposedly going to be the one that really gets him the best actor Oscar. So you get him now. You get him now. People will absolutely change their minds about Kang. And he'll be a great addition to the MCU. Yeah. And if you're going with Doctor Doom, then Coleman is a perfect guy to come in as a bridge Kang to get to the Doctor Doom situation. And you won't lose anything, and people will give it another uh, chance here. So, yeah, I think it's a smart move to go that yeah, route. I think so, too. Hmm. Tom Hanks, Wildfiles Project 8200 video is the craziest I've seen. I haven't seen it yet. But, I don't uh, know what that is, yeah. Uh, so, Wildfiles is a channel that it's like, it's it's a great channel. It really. Oh. Is. Um, and they're getting bigger and bigger. I keep hearing about him even more so now, and I haven't watched it yet, but I will because I've heard that video is pretty nuts. Um, okay, Kenneth Colton, I'm concerned there are zero reviews for Ghostbusters Frozen Empire, which comes out this Thursday. Does this worry you guys when you see the film? So, yeah, I, let me double check on the embargo on it, John, but like I want to see when the social embargo drops. Yeah, I, don't think, I don't think it's up either one, none of them were up until tomorrow, I think. Right? So, yeah. let me tell That's you, why you think. I'm going to tell you when the actual so. It doesn't oh, all, all the social media March twentieth on yeah, Wednesday at six a.m. So I'm actually going to see it on my, the so when I see it on Wednesday, mm. it will um the the social embargo will drop then. But your your social you won't be able to post until Wednesday at six a.m. It looks like. But my out of theater reaction, I could probably post. No, right? no right? social embargo mm. lifts also. Fine. No, that 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 you don't want to do social. That's because that's because the out of the theater reaction is a, is a social reaction. Is it? Yeah, <laughs> that's, how, that's how you do it. Is YouTube a social media? Thing? I just feel like it's not yeah. social media. Of course. What else is it? Of course, it's a social. It's, media. it's a video store. What? I don't know. I don't agree with you. Up, we just disagree on that. But whatever. let's have a blast. <laughs> I ain't doing it. Um. So, but it it is interesting that you know yeah. it's Wednesday is when it drops. It comes out on Thursday. Mm. We'll see. We'll find out soon. But that's when we see it. The two of us, anyway. Um, John, well, there may be spoilers. Like people are assuming it's going to be. There may be spoilers they don't want people to know about just yet. Variety. Yeah. 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 Uh, Carlton Rudder. Good evening from the UK for this yeah. week's question. Can either of you sing other than in the car in the shower? And do you have any answers? I can't actually sing. I say I've, I did the. Um, I posted the Tom Petty thing. People uh, that, uh, mm. that I think is a short. I'm missing in Tom Petty, but yeah, I like I like to sing, um, and dance moves here and there, here and there. Oh, I got dance moves. I can't sing though. Yeah, so that's uh, that's what I got. All right, let's see next. Uh, but yeah, I think that Tom Petty thing is up. Tom Hanks, big balls, reading as Pacino, best picture winner. Oh, <laughs> that, that's easy to do. That's easy. Okay, hey everybody. Oh, well, they asked me to. They asked me to come out here. And so I'm going to read, and they want me to read, and so I'm going to. Here we go. The best picture for this year is, hold on, I'm getting there. I'm about to read it. Here we go. My eyes see Oppenheimer! <laughs> 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 I love Alba. Come on. <laughs> the best. The best. My eyes see happy. I got to get back to my dinner. Yeah. At Gallagher's. Mm. Great. Been going down the Schmodown rabbit hole this weekend. And thanks mm. for all the memories and content, gentlemen. Cheers. Thank you, man. Very oh. kind of you. And uh, 
yeah, I mean that's that's big props to Frankie Janish, man. He's been he's yeah. been really doing great on that channel, and the reason why everybody has it because it's just I didn't have enough time to do it. Yeah, and, yeah, of course. And Frank Frank's been diving into it, and like every list and every video that you see is all is all him. So can I suggest something to you? Yeah, sure. If Frankie wants to do this, and if you approve it, extra fun content could be where you interview fun. each of us for yeah. like 10, 15 minutes and give our thoughts on the Schmodown run or whatever. And you can put that on the playlist sure. as a video uh, for whatever. So just throwing it out there. I think we've actually talked about doing some watch alongs to some oh, yeah. stuff too. Uh, that'd be something, but like, I want to make sure that we get all every single video up first and then that course, there's course. an audience for it, you know, and that people are, but I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't mind giving it a shot to do a couple of those too, to what we yeah. used to do and watching booze and just kind of talking it through. And it's just, just for the old school fans who want to see some yeah. stuff. I'm, I'm up for that. I'd like to do a watch along one of my victories. Cause I've done a watch along and I'm getting sick of it. So That's yeah. fair. Bill Gaffney, total CM Punk move to be, to complain about being left out. Well, <laughs> yeah, you're goddamn right. Perfect. Hey, you know, who's done a lot of merch CM Punk. So yeah. suck it. Gaffney. <laughs> <laughs> Levi. <laughs> Huge fan since the Schmoes days and Roku, you rock. I have to recommend the novel Light of the Jedi from the High Republic. You'll be hooked. Mm. So I have it. Yeah, I, I was gonna say I've got it back here somewhere. I right? have it. The problem that I I just I got duped by I got duped by them. And, and oh. I when it comes to the if you like just reading the stories to just read the stories, yeah, you should have a blast with those because they have some great writers and they have some great people who are telling great Star Wars stories. I got involved to start reading these things for a different reason. Because mm. in 2012, they said all the shows, all the games, all the novels, right. all the comics, it's all canon. It's all right. going to mean something sometimes until it, until we need to change it. And Floney does not give a crap about the books. He doesn't care about the comics. He cares about the shows. He cares about the, the movies and, the, and maybe the games. And that's it. Um, so when there's things that are changing all the time, I'm like, oh, that, and then she's like, well, no, but that negates that. And that negates, I'm like, I'm not, I'm not invested in it anymore. And yeah. it's like, oh, maybe they have a character or two that does this, but that's for me. If yeah. you read it because I just want like a great story. And I heard that that book is great. Then I, I suggest that people should absolutely read those books and support those authors. But it's just not why I, I just don't, people are like, why don't you read the books anymore? I just don't care anymore. Yeah. Fair point. Yeah. Um, okay. Next one. And we got there eventually. So we this this is Mr. I oh he's back, John. Hey, I crap and shits. Yes, perfect. Here's my money. Don't don't break my legs, Roka. Two dollars? That's not Stop enough. It. Stop that. Don't do that to don't at least it. at least oh. one of at least a shin. I get to break a shin. Stop it. Easy for Sheezy. Best show on YouTube. Please do weekly shogun discussion. John does a weekly shogun discussion. Do. He does it on his channel. You should check out, and that's why you should subscribe to John's channel. I haven't well, I think I'm going to watch the whole series and then I'll review season one. That's probably yeah. what I'll do. Yeah. Uh, but you should watch John does, and you do it with your buddy from Cinephiles, right? Yeah, yeah, from Cinephiles, uh, Steve Cinephiles. Morris, who is a big James Clavell fan. He's read all his books. He's very okay. steeped in the knowledge of the book. So we do a book to a show comparison along with reviewing the show. So I think it's a it's one of the best review shows out there because of Steve's knowledge of that stuff. It helps. So yeah, okay. to check it out, Galagos. Now the accolade is my dream show since I was an evil bastard in, in, in uh, Knights of the Republic 1 and 2 and wish for this show. What is your rankings of the Star Wars shows so <laughs> far? Um, if I put them at the top of my head, this, this list could change. Okay. Right? But if I put them at the top of my head, I would probably still say Mandalorian Season 1 Ooh, okay. at, uh, and or number 2, Mandalorian Season 2, the third, um, and then if I'm missing, I'm not including the animated. Um, mm -hmm. Then I would put probably Ahsoka mm -hmm. and then Obi-Wan and then Boba Fett. Okay. I would just say this. Yeah. It's Andor, Mandalorian Season 1, Mandalorian Season 2, and then everything else is tied for that next slot. That's that, fair. I agree with you on that. That's totally fair. Yeah. Um, I think I've even forgot Season 3. So Season 3 of Mandalorian will probably go before Ahsoka. Yeah. Yeah, so it can get worse for me every time I think about it. Um, and I, I liked it initially when I was watching it. And then I did. Uh -huh. it just got, it's just so poorly written. Um, yeah. Yeah. Zach Woolley, what did you think of the Rocks promo concert? I was confused and made him look like a face. I didn't see it yet. I heard I heard yeah. him going really face with it. Did you hate it? This cocksucker, man. He's winning me back. I fucking oh. hate it. He's winning me back. He came out to the Hollywood Hog. He came out to the Hollywood Rock music. Oh, he did. Yeah. Dude, that's, those screens. Those Titan Trons, if anything makes me miss the Schmodown, it would be to push Christian to create that 
Yeah. To have us come out with that massive fucking screen behind us, that is the Mark awesome. Cuban would really have to buy the fucking <laughs> yeah, exactly. He's got shit, so a lot yeah. of money, but but yeah, his concert thing, it look, he is absolutely going face and he is signaling that he's going face. And you have to read between the lines of some of the things that he's saying, but he is winning me back. I do think it sucks that he's overshadowing everybody else who is having matches at WrestleMania, but it's the fucking rock. What can you do, Bring man? Everybody's watching. Everybody's watching. Yeah. And when he's in this kind of mood, he's yeah. he, you can't beat him. You can't beat him. And you got to, and he's got to be, he's got to, it's, this has to be the highest rated SmackDowns like ever. Probably. Ever. And Probably. what he's doing well, even though, even though he's overshadowing right now. Right, right, right. What he's doing, you look at, for example, my brother who doesn't watch anymore has been watching a lot because Rock's back, right? Yesterday yeah. he was on the phone with him. He's like, I like the Seth Rollins guy. Now okay. he knows where Seth oh. Rollins is, right? He's like, now, so Seth Rollins had a chance to shine some more, right? Cody obviously right. has this time to shine. They, they, so they shine, even though they're in the shadow, they're still shining by the time, like, oh, yeah, now the rocks, when the rock starts to take a back seat a little bit. Yeah, yeah. He's already elevated them through his star power. Yeah, the rising tide lifting all the boats. Exactly Great point. That's yeah. exactly what it is. Okay. Uh, Ralph. <laughs> Had, uh, Roman Polanski not done what he done would he have been Scorsese Spielberg level by now a lot of studios would want him for their movie I mean he would definitely be working more I'll tell you that now whether yeah. he would have had more uh, great movies I don't know I don't think so Scorsese um, sorry Polanski has a certain aesthetic and it is not necessarily a mainstream aesthetic overall there are some mainstream films of his but watches Macbeth or watches other stuff and it's like whoa this is not so it's it's a much more it's much more PTA it's much more independent yeah. film than it is uh, uh, mainstream stuff like with Spielberg. I'm not sure where this came from, but wait, they don't like Andor. Who who doesn't like Andor? Someone in the chat? I guess someone in the chat doesn't like Andor. Maybe. Yeah, I'm not sure. Um, Ralph, with combined filmography, who made the single best movie? Scorsese, Spielberg, Coppola, Lucas, Goodfellas. For me, truthfully, we can remove. Lucas for Ridley. I mean, the single best movie. Hard for me because Empire Strikes Back is my favorite movie, but I can also, I can also acknowledge that you could probably say something along the lines and be like, "Well, I think that overall, this movie might be a better made movie than that one." Even though Lucas didn't make Empire Strikes Back. Look, this direct, is so. this is a weird situation because you can't put Lucas in the Lucas directed one film from the original trilogy, and then Lucas directed those the prequel trilogy, which yeah. isn't that great. So, in my opinion. And I know it's been reappraised, and I respect that. But, like, in my opinion, it's so to me, Lucas doesn't belong in this category with Scorsese. But those are directors. It's a right. different situation. Yeah, that's what he's, and that's what he said. So, he said you could so probably... I would move for Ridley. So, for Ridley. me, it would be Apocalypse Now from Coppola. Mm -hmm. That's my number one. Or Godfather Part Godfather 2. Those two. are my best movies. Yeah, and Saving Private Ryan, to me, is still not. I don't, I don't know. I don't know. That's 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 always a tough one, um, for sure. Hmm. Okay, as we keep going here, guys, thank you for everybody here. Ralph, best part of my IC Oppenheimer was after the music started playing and everyone clapping. Pacino says in the mic, what happened? Watch it again. Oh, I have to. I didn't. I no, totally. What bad. happened? Is that what he says? He says what happened? Oh, so I thought we were leading up to it. You already announced it, Al. Is oh. that what he said? Yes. He said we were leading up to no, it? No, I'd say that's what he's thinking. Oh, when he my says what happened? Skeleton Strange New World. Hey number one fan hey guys we are five days away from ghostbusters 4 it's easy to find reviews of trump's russian <laughs> in a ghostbusters 4 review does this spell trouble and heartbreak i don't know i mean it's i think that i'm very curious now i'll be i'll be looking for, i'll probably have to text john uh tomorrow right. if he sees it um but i'm uh, i don't know yet i mean you you've been hearing from some people that have not yeah, that have seen other things that they that they liked it so yeah. we'll see but I, the, again the you're not seeing anything because P the the embargo is where it's at, and I think the embargo is probably because there are surprises in the movie. The Harold Ramis thing was a massive surprise, and so we'll see if they've got something else lined up to be a surprise in yeah. this second one. So, yeah. All right, next one, Clone Force. What's up, guys? And I know Christian, you haven't watched Bad Batch season three yet, but John, your thoughts on season three so far? And will we see Vader? Well, wait a minute. Hold on. Okay. Uh, this is this is a guy who clearly likes Star Wars. And the only show that I really focus the most on Star Wars is my Wednesday big thing. And Steph and I have been talking about Bad Batch every week. Clearly, the guy doesn't watch the Wednesday episode. Yeah. Um, but I have a bot. I do watch Bad Batch season three, and I think it's great so far. I think it's really good so far. Uh, mm -hmm. And Vader is already in the trailer for one of these episodes. Mm -hmm. So I think the answer is yes to that. And I think this has been a really good season so far. Um, and I've enjoyed, I've actually really enjoyed it. 
Yeah, this has been the season I was waiting for the whole time yeah. for Bad Batch, yep. and I'm having a great time with it. The numbers aren't doing so great on my channel, so we're throwing those reviews in with like Geek Buddies and other yep. stuff, and so and Jedi Way. So we're not doing singular reviews of the show anymore. Right. So, but we are reviewing them on my channel. But I love the season; it's great. Yeah, well, Steph and I. Well, Steph won't be on this this week, but like mm. we when we usually when we both watch, we'll probably do the next two episodes next week. Although we did miss it. The, the last past week so if you oh, check, yeah. from last week yeah. well i watched both of them but yeah. we just didn't have a chance to talk about it um uh, last wednesday but we we've been doing a lot of that stuff for sure uh clone force i want a balin and aja story and tells the jedi that'd be great that'd be great if they did uh, an homage to to ray in that one it'd be great yeah i want them to actually do a tales of the sith i know it was rumored <laughs> i know it was rumored yeah uh war table entertainment and gaming hey go. christian why wouldn't Filoni want dark stories like Andor? I agree with you. There's m much more dark stories from Tales of Jedi and Clone Wars. Do you think Filoni will get involved with the Ray trilogy? I do think he'll get involved with the Ray trilogy. I think he's definitely going to come along for some of the, those things. I just feel like he's got a very tight philosophy of what he thinks Star Wars is, and I don't necessarily think Andor fits into that. But wait, he said he liked it at, at Celebration. He was promoting everything. Stop it. <laughs> um, I just feel that. And I think that, no, I, I, I don't understand why. I think that maybe because they have this philosophy that Star Wars is for kids and adults, which it is, but you can you can push towards more adult themes sometimes, and I think Andor proves that. But, yeah, uh, that's correct. There is no Ray trilogy. It's supposed to be oh, a right. singular film. So, right. It, right. But I do think Filoni's already involved in that and has been involved with that for a bit. Well, they said singular film with possibilities of sequels. But right. It's not a they haven't confirmed the trilogy. Right. Right. right, which I think is a smart play. To be honest. I agree. Yeah. I agree. My favorite soundtrack is Dune. It, my favorite soundtrack in Dune is House Atreides. When Hans Zimmer blasts that bagpipes in space, I start to cry. Please listen. It's great. I've listened to it. It's amazing. Thank you, Ralph, for continuing to put in some great questions. But yeah, I love that score. is awesome. It's just yep. a, an amazing score. Both one of my favorite. I hope I hope it gets nominated and I hope it wins. Yeah. Um, Chris Costa, would you consider having a segment on? Capes and Cows, where you answer super chat questions? If not, it's all good. Hope you're doing well. We've actually done that. Um, we've done a few live shows with with Coy and Winston, uh, and where we've done exactly what John and I do here. We do it mm -hmm. every once in a while. We do. I think we might actually do it next Friday um, because I have to go out of town, so we'll be doing it on uh, we'll be doing it on Friday nice. uh, when I'm back because I'm going to be out on Thursday. So Friday will be um, yeah we're we're, we're going to do that, but it's not it's hard for me sometimes to. I mean, I should, I, what I could do, I guess, is ask people to put in the previous week, but it's like, it's, it's just hard. It's harder to do. So I live, and we're probably going to do once the summer hits, I might do a few more live episodes of shows, but mm. I don't know yet, but I, I like, I kind of like doing the, just the live with John and myself, to be honest with you. It's just kind of like, it's the, it's the one thing that does, uh, it's just my only live show that I do. And it makes it more unique that way. Um, but I will be doing it from time to time um okay let's see next one here this is from bill gaffney what's up bill when did a film go from subjective to an absolute it's sad it's true what i don't know what that means he meant to, from the civil war conversation when oh did, oh opinion, right 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 opinions just go from being a subjective opinion to yeah, yeah. so yeah. that's it it's always subjective that's the thing yeah. Shogun, this is Mad Sinister Macau. Shogun don't have shit on the big show. Big thing. Great. <laughs> Appreciate it. How, how many episodes are they in that show right now, John? Uh, we just did the the fifth one's coming up this week. Shit, I got a lot to catch yeah, up. Yeah, and this is supposed to be a big one, so yeah. Shit, I really got to catch up on stuff. <laughs> yeah. um, I have so much. I have so much I have to. to You'll be sucked in. That's the thing. Once you start one, bro, you're going to want to watch all five. I'm going to watch them on the plane. Uh, Mad Sinister Macau. Rob Zombie versus Harloff TLC match. Who wins? Uh, zombie. Are you kidding me? He's crazy. I wouldn't go anywhere near that guy. Like, I, I thought he, he, I thought I was, I was, I'm convinced. I am convinced that he watched that video that Brett and I did because he commented about what we were talking about for, for the most part. Yeah. I'm not sure because that, that video did a lot better than I thought it was going to do. <laughs> and it got to a lot of people. And yeah, I feel like he saw it and he probably hates our guts. Um, Francisco Lopez. Hey, Harloff and Roca. How you guys doing? Good, man. Thank you. Roca, okay. are you, JTE, and Jeff going to do spoiler review for the new Dynasty English Patriots? 
Well, we did a review of the first two episodes that's up on my channel now. Um, I got to talk to the guys and see if they've got time this week uh, to do it. But, you know, JT has been busy. Jeff's been really busy with that newsletter. So we'll see if we can find time. But certainly, yeah, because the last two episodes dropped this past week. Right. Um, but if we can get something up, maybe we'll get up by Wednesday or Thursday. Oh, Wednesday, I guess, before the hot mic. So, yeah, I'll let you know. All right. So next one coming in here, too, is Clone Force. Hmm. Will you guys mark out if Stone Cold helps Cody? I don't think he's coming. I, I think that takes he away. He has been posting videos of himself training Christian. Really? He is absolutely showing up. He's and he's going to he's gonna counter the rock in some way or help Cody in some way. Yeah. All right. Um, Hank Yo. recently came across a clip of Schnepp telling you two a story about him pranking his friend into thinking Blair, <laughs> Blair Witch was real. He was the best. I don't remember that. I don't remember. I'm sure that it was true, but I don't remember. I don't remember that clip. Yeah. Don't, Do get, you remember me that? Thinking, don't get me thinking about him. I'll get all uh, Yeah. Yeah. I do remember that. It was fun. It was oh. fun. Yeah. I don't remember. Um, That's really awesome. I, it does seem right up his alley. So I, yeah. I don't, I don't doubt it for a second. Skeleton Strange New Worlds fan. Thank you so much for this. Making a movie like Civil War in a country where one side is boiling with Civil War rhetoric and the other side isn't is like making a Jack the Ripper film that doesn't blame anyone for seven hit prostitutes in London. Well, I mean, I don't know. It's just, it's but that's the same thing though, dude. You haven't seen the movie. Yeah. You right. haven't seen the movie, so you don't know it's handled yet. You got it. It's it's not telling our story, it's telling that story that time. A multiple of stuff that connects to what we're going through now yeah yeah it's, so it's too hard for me to say and to comment off of that to be honest because i don't know i i have no i have nothing to reference yeah. i have nothing to say well no this part that he did this right in the movie right. except that you know from what i've seen people saying about the movie or the criticisms that some people say that it doesn't take a side so i don't know yet i gotta see i gotta see it um mance mance was on cnn talking yeah. about it, which i thought was great yeah. Yeah. and he said like the movie itself you're already in the civil war and there's no explanation right. of how it happened. Right. So you're just in it and what you would do to navigate it. And Perfect. it's basically following Justin Dunst trying to get to Washington. So it has shades of apocalypse now, which I think is a great description that gets me even more excited. So yeah. I'm excited. I'm very excited to see it. Um, Wicked Art. Hey, Christian and John. I hope Ac Acolyte does good. And I'm ready to move away from the original timeline, original trilogy timeline. The stuff that they had in Jedi Survivor game was cool. And I would love to see it in live action. You guys keep up the great work and much love. Well, Wicked Art is the absolute best. If you guys know, we have a Capes and Cows comic book. Have you seen this, John? No. There's oh, a comic book? Oh, yeah. I mean, this is Big Balls on the on the cover. Oh, wow. Oh, he's done. He's he's now he's finished issue four. Issue four is available on Patreon. That's incredible. Um, but he's doing five, and he's telling me the stuff that's going on with five. But he's super talented. Yeah, we have that. You can, and that's, that's on, you can get that on uh, the store, but it's great. I love, that's absolutely awesome. love it. Uh, he's very talented, but yeah, I agree that you could probably move once you move away from that trilogy, dude, and, and set other stories. That's why I really hope the acolyte is successful, and I hope this this trailer tomorrow gets everybody excited and that they yeah. think it looks good and that it doesn't look, you know, like kind of if if the trailer doesn't go well, if that's bad. That's bad news again. Yeah, um, agreed. Hank Pym, Roka can't be Ellis in a cage match. Who wins? Depends on who's who's not eaten. I'm not in shape, and <laughs> I couldn't yeah. possibly take yeah. on Ellis or Campy at this point. Yeah, it depends on who's eating. Um, okay. PLD Projects. What up, PLD? Yeah. Ed Harris movie comes out, and no mention. I quit. Fair enough. Which one is that? Which movie's yeah. coming out? There's an Ed Harris movie. Yeah, is he still alive? I didn't know he was still alive. PLD? Yeah, he just sent in a super chat. No, Ed Harris. <laughs> <laughs> and Porkins. Kong, Popcorn Button, or the Dune one? Well, you get yourself oh. in trouble with your significant other if you have the Dune one. Dune, please. It's incredible. Yeah. Um, Miguel. There he is. <laughs> and so Miguel, who put that whole report out that we read today. Oh, yeah. Miguel nice. says that, Christian, I'm pretty sure you're going to get your Sith-led show. Ooh. Uh, a little scoop there, I guess. Um, right. Right. Well, look, I think that I don't doubt it, man, because, like I said, I think that all they did was change the synopsis around so because of what i just said beforehand where they want people yeah. to think this jedi is in the lead but then ultimately you turn it into this Sith thing if you're going to do it yeah you can do it on tv because they're not going to do it in movies so that's yeah. that's that's good news hopefully so i think that miguel miguel's probably got a scoop that he's not telling us about yeah so miguel. i totally totally um i like that miguel's the best by the way go check out miguel on star wars Newsnet for all your scoops and and great articles that you need yeah he's, hey, kind of Reyes, he's the best Happy Monday, fellas. Do you think Ray should have a love interest in the new Star Wars movie? Also, Roka, what's your favorite food spot in San Diego? No, I don't think she should have a love interest in the new Star Wars movie. Enough with that stuff. Um, 
Mm. We used to have a oh, well. Look, uh, we used to have a great place here, uh, the Barrel Room, uh, but they closed down a few we- a few weeks ago, which is heartbreaking because we used to love okay. love going there. But now I go to Bota Sushi. I'm a big mm. sushi guy. I'm getting into sushi big time right now. Right. So yeah, That's, that sounds pretty good. Yeah. Going to San Diego soon. I might have to go find that one. Yeah, man. Um, and then yeah, I I'm not going to shoot down the love interest thing yet. Okay, as, if it's done right. All because right. the one thing that I wouldn't mind them doing, the reason why I wouldn't mind them doing it, is to show that they're not necessarily sticking with the old rules of the Jedi. No, fair. And and oh yeah, because she's re- reestablishing the she's order, reestablishing yeah. the order. So is she yeah. making everybody not have love interest again? Yeah. Um. So if they do it the right way and it's not forced, no pun intended. Um. So yeah, I'm not a, I'm not opposed to it. Okay. Let's see. This is a great quote, obviously. Philly G. It's not about how hard you can fart, but how much fart you can take. Paulie from Rocky Three, I think. You might have um, not had your Z-biotics before you, <laughs> when you were watching that movie. Um, okay. Peter Parker. Recently watched a hard lovers Bonnie fight oh. in the old Schmoes day. Such a great battle, and Bonnie was so funny. Ever hear from her? I did. She, Bonnie, I, I, Bonnie's husband just wrote a... Um, a, a really good treatment. They sent it to me to take a look at and a screenplay, and I sent it over to a few friends. But they, yeah, they're doing. She's you know she's still doing her thing, man. They, they're she's been married now for a, a little over a year. Her husband's a great awesome. guy, and uh, yeah, I, I talked to Bonnie here and there for sure. Um, but yeah, that video. I think it, I don't even know where we found that video. All right. <laughs> Christian, with the demise of your short-lived Yarf show, any chance you could have a short segment during these shows with John and where you bring in a re- rotating third person, also a Schmobot? No. Return. Schmobot will never return. Um, <laughs> never. No, I had it on I had it on that Yarf thing too, but like it, the same thing, man. I had that, like no, nobody was really watching that show, you know, and it was like, and it was a struggle to really get, you know, and it was like, I, I don't want shows to feel like, like telethons. It's mm-hmm. like if you guys want to ask questions, I'm so grateful to it. If you want to put super chats in, you want to have be part of the show. It's your it's your um your your, your prerogative. You want to do it if you don't. If you just want to yeah. be in the chat room and watch the show and to give you an actual show instead of me just trying to you know do some funny bits here and there too. It it it's just not the same. And as far as bringing in another guest, probably not unless we have like a if there's like a special interview that maybe we can get. Like I have, I have David Del Smolchin actually that I did a whole interview with. I just did an oh, interview nice. with him, nice. and uh, that's going to be airing probably as the Wednesday episode this week. Cool. Um, and if we get like a special interview or something, John, then like, that's something we'll do. like. Yeah. I like just doing the discussions because these these shows can go. I mean, right, this one's at one twenty one already. You know, like these shows can go long and. John and I like we we don't we don't really get to yeah, remember John and I've been college buddies yeah. we've been friends for years so this is like our this is our two hours we get to hang out like a week so <laughs> yeah. yeah yeah so probably not um, but thank you for the uh, the kind words yeah King's Portal King's Port wait sorry King's Port Cal when is yeah. Christian going to move to New York when's Roca going to get married please tell me <laughs> some flaws of Dune too I try to people thinking. Uh, I'm tired of people thinking it is an act of God. I love it. The flaws. There's, I mean, look. If you want to say it's too long, maybe some people can say that. You want? I don't. I don't know. I got to see it again. I don't see a lot of flaws in it. I gave it five out of five. Yeah. Um, New York's probably going to happen sooner than later. I'll make more announcements about that when it when it comes. Um, and John, about married. When you get married? No, no, we're we're fine. We're happy. Look, we both make it very clear. We yeah. are each other's person. There's no need to make it legal anytime soon. We make it legal when we feel like it. We'll get a bug up our ass and drive down to the justice of the peace and do it. So it's it's not a big. I had friends asking me, but I was in LA this weekend saying goodbye to a couple of friends who were moving, and they they are all asked it like, when are you getting married? And it's like we're so right. committed to each other that's it doesn't matter. But yeah. it'll happen at some point. But there's no there no rush. Yeah. Uh, Cowboys fan ninety two. What's up, guys? Love you guys since the Collider days. What are your thoughts on both the Acolyte and the first trailer for Rebel Moon dropping on the same day? Hi from Amon. Um, yeah. Well, they're not because Rebel Moon dropped today. Yeah. Acolyte drops tomorrow. So it dropped um, today to uh, celebrate the three year anniversary of uh, Snyder, the Justice League from Snyder dropping. Is that what it was? Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. And then, by the way, there's no audio on your Love is Blind watch along mm-hmm. on your channel. You might need to rewatch and record it. No, uh, there, I had to take it down because oh, apparently okay. you could hear some of the Netflix audio from the show uh, bleeding through. So, lesson learned. I'll have to watch on Bluetooth headphones next time when I do a watch along like that. And but I left it up because the, my intro and my thoughts on it afterwards are there for people to watch. That audio is still up there. So 
unfortunately that's the way it goes sometimes with uh with youtube so so there you go yeah all right let's go to the next one scott cross katie sacker was recording for the podcast at motor oh good 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 um yeah i know that she was going to do some stuff um there so she's because we're not doing the show together anymore so like we're mm. yeah so basically what it was is that oh, no no, no it's, it's totally she she lives in oregon yeah right? so she's able to we had, she hired me on to do video producing yeah video. she's doing an audio show now and she's going to oh. the cons she's gonna have guests and she's gonna sit down with people she's gonna do an audio show and she's gonna and she's gonna do a full audio show so it's like we she's gonna come on big things she'll be one of those guests by the way that might oh, be great so, I've never um, talked with her so yeah, fun you've never talked to her before no no oh okay so yeah, yeah so i would love to talk to her one yeah, time and he's the best. so she'll be on she's gonna be on big thing more often too but that cool. makes sense because we had talked about when we were going to do video she was going to do it there so that totally makes sense yeah um okay miguel no scoop but Leslie has been saying the show is Sith-led forever. I know that's the problem, though, dude. Mm. And reading between the lines elsewhere, it seems that way. Okay. She has been saying that, but yeah. and there seem to be like this all behind-the-scenes reshoots and things, too. I, I'm, I'm, I'm crossing fingers. We'll see. Yeah. Uh, Scott Cross, Motor City Comic Con in May. Will you be there? I will not be there. I'm not going to be there in May. Um, and then we have a couple more here. Ed Boy Movies. Hey, gents, don't know if this is true, but Major Still Kang? But adding another villain as opposed to recast shifting to another villain, I saw that on Twitter. No, there's no way. No there's fucking no way. way they bring him back. Yeah, no there's fucking no way. way. No way. Haskell 420. Hey guys, are you excited for the Pooniverse? What is that? Drop the, the poop. Oh, evil <laughs> Winnie riding an evil Bambi. What's no? It, this is such a gimmick. It's such like a. It's such a, like a. High, yeah. It's like it's like the the gobbly gooker from the WWF. It's such a, <laughs> such a gimmick. That's a and great I, comparison, right? It's such a gimmick, and I can't say it's like I I. People are like, oh, you're gonna ever see them? Never. I will never watch that movie. I will never watch that movie. I think that if you like those movies, good for you. I think it's such it's such a it's it's so lame that they do them. Mm. It literally, like, you know, there's I saw a bunch of kids for, whether it's my kids, my my, my kids' friends, yeah. going, well, what is this? And they loved Winnie the Pooh and it kind of and they saw this poster and they were like terrified by it. Mm. And it's like, well, you to toughen your kids up, eat shit. Um, it's it's like there's it's I just don't like the, the tainting of the of the property. I don't know. Yeah. I'm not gonna see anything. Like anything. that Mickey Mouse one looks terrible too. Yeah. Yeah. No, I want nothing to do with it. Um, but if other people do, then good good for them. Good for you. Good yeah. for you. Good for them. Okay. Skeleton Strange World's number mm -hmm. one fan. The great Kevin Smith was my entrance into the podcast world. Have you guys ever hung out with my boy Smith? Oh, you're new to the show. You must be new to the show, which is fine. Um, I've interviewed Kevin a bunch of times, and Kevin was a competitor in the movie Trivia Schmodown. Yes, you should do if I mentioned the movie Trivia Schmodown. Go to that channel and search Chris Jericho versus Kevin Smith. Kevin Smith competed like four times. He was very close to a title shot. Yes, um, he was. Kevin and I have been definitely. He's a. He's. I could say Kevin's a buddy at this point. Um, so yes, we have, and Kevin's great. So there you go. I would check. I was on Kevin's show not, about a year ago. Nice. Uh, Mike Choice. Smobot became sentient. They're going to be like. <laughs> It already, I think it already has been, and it's yeah. it's a, it's a it, you're just trying to take over the whole damn show. <laughs> Amanda, collab with Ellis anytime soon. I'll probably have Ellis on the show, uh, and and then besides that, um, Ellis and I are going to before I leave to New York. Ellis is going to Ellis and I already talked about doing a show in uh, in probably the comedy store as nice. like going away comedy sh show. Cool. So um, we'll do that, and then I'm probably going to do. There's a comedy club in Long Island that I'm going to look at, or or there's a few in Queens that I'm going to look at, and there's a few in the city that I'm going to look at. So, um, okay, here is Darth Vader's burnt asshole. <laughs> Shouldn't wow. judge the acolyte based on rumors that are unconfirmed. Villain led show. Judge the show by what it delivers. Yeah, for sure. Also, I don't buy the can or his revenant thing. He'd be a thousand. He'd be thousands of years. Well, no, that's that. You had me until everything at the end because because you have holocrons, guy. Um, so it's like you can, you, you, yeah. they, the whole point is they really probably stumble upon it. It's a it's a quick sh scene with him in holocron form as uh, as Revan. So the last part, no, the other stuff shouldn't judge the acolyte based on rumors that aren't confirmed. Sure, I agree with you. Judge the show by what it delivers. Agreed, but in, you could also have thoughts and opinions. This is one of the things that I always push yeah. back at, and I can't stand. You shouldn't speculate. You shouldn't do this. It's part of the fun. It depends on how you do it. That's why the joke of speculate responsibility come, comes in, right? I So the, a lot of what you said I agree with, except the end. Um, okay. Mandalorian and Grogu in Big Ball's voice. Before we get out of here, is that the last one? 
I think I it might be the last one. All right. Um, yep, it is. Okay. Big balls, you're on, buddy. Right? Okay. Oh. Okay. Here we go. Okay, okay. Coming this summer. Well, not, I guess, this summer. Uh, 2025. Oh, no, no, no. 2026. When's Patty Jenkins' movie coming out? 2045. Uh, what do they do with Patty Jenkins' movie? Oh, she got another movie. She does? Yeah, she said it does. Yeah, she got another movie. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, okay. It got canceled again. Now it's back on again. Now it's canceled again. Now she's flying around. It's canceled again. She got it. She don't got it. She got it. There's problems on the set. Uh-oh. What's coming next? Okay. Dave Filoni presents the latest, the greatest, Mandalorian and Grogu. Thanks, big boss. There you go. <laughs> Perfect. Uh, oh, you got one more. Oh, last one. Here it is. Aaron Cole. Ray having a love interest in the new movie would show that the new Jedi Order has evolved and learning from the past to embrace attachments also fits her character of found family. That's that's what I'm saying. I I it it could work. It could work. It just depends. It's it all depends on the writing. Yeah. 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 As uh as the great Chubb said, it's all in the hips. All, <laughs> right. all right, Johnny, let's get out of here. Where can all I right. find you? You can always find me at the Roca says on Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok, the Outlaw Nation on Twitch. My YouTube channel, youtube.com slash John Roca says, come aboard, come hang out with us. The hot mic, the Jedi way, the geek buddies, all there for you all to enjoy. Plus my trailer reactions. I have my Rebel Moon chapter two, the scar giver trailer reaction up right now. Uh, already making plans for Jedi way this week. Talk about the acolyte, the, uh, and all the big news I have in Star Wars last week and uh, talk about the Corona interview. And then, of course, the hot mic on Thursdays. And the Geek Buddies, we will definitely be doing a review of the Acolytes tomorrow morning. If it drops in the morning and then our regular show later on in the week. So come and hang out with us and have some fun. And you never know what surprises are popping up on the Outlaw Nation channel. So come and our show gun review. So come hang out with us there. YouTube.com slash John Roca says, please. All right. Thank you, John. Thanks, Christian. Thanks, bud. Later, brother. All right. So the other thing, as John was mentioning with Acolyte, I'm going to most likely do my reaction in the morning. So that means I'll probably push UAP Tuesday, probably a little, probably like 12 or 1 in the afternoon. That also, you should, if you're, if you're a fan of that show, you're going to love it. I got both Darcy Weir and Tim Gallaudet on the show. And Tim Gallaudet is the um, retired rear admiral. And he talks about a lot of different things, man. A lot of crazy, uh, not crazy, but like a lot of things that'll blow your mind. Things that'll blow your mind. Um, so make sure you check that out. I have my UAP News channel. I want to thank everybody who was here today. Oh, I don't? Oh, somebody said I don't like Star Wars anymore. I guess I just found that out. Thank you, Captain Penis. Um, but no, I still do. Thank you, though. Anyway, uh, I appreciate everybody being here today and joining us. And if you are able to, and you haven't, subscribe to the channel, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, anywhere podcasts are found. Thank you for joining us on the show today. And as always, if you're able to and you have the means to, please, please check out our wonderful sponsors. All right, guys. Goodbye, Captain Penis. We'll see you guys later. Bye.